Hello, everybody. Who was looking at my tank in the last video? This is Alexander Williamson of Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, and it's Sergio. What's up, Sergio? Um, also going on here, we have somebody laying eggs. Now, I thought this may have been a male due to the big old notch in the forehead, but I can see the ovopositor, which means the egg dropper, eggomatic. And look at all these eggs. Awesome. So hopefully they don't get stressed and eat them. That's been known to happen uh, with Sergio. But I think they're going to have beautiful babies with bronze and copper heads and turquoise markings and... Uh, more of the smoky back uh, end. So check this out. We're watching the eggs get laid in real time, even though Sergio does not want that to happen. He, he doesn't want you to see. He's going to try to block it. Thank you, Sergio. But as I told you in the last video, they looked for a leaf that had a little bit of current so that mold wouldn't uh, happen, rot and mold. And then... Sergio meticulously cleaned off the leaf for about a week in the last few days very very meticulously it was covered in blackbeard algae and other types of algae kind of like this one same plant and I thought he would be using this leaf perhaps but they want the one in the light up above and she is laying eggs right in a row you can see there and dropping them off. So you guys are literally catching them doing that. And she is able to finesse those eggs without hands. I mean, obviously fish don't have hands. They have fins. She's not even using her fins, really. She's able to use this ovipositor and one egg at a time uh, put them down, uh, which hopefully he then will fertilize. We have so many fry downstairs, though. We have the crib fry. We have the... Uh, he also has a sort of gonopodium type thing that will come out and be able to fertilize all these eggs. She's not done, and usually they lay them in neater rows, but this being her first clutch, um, it might just be that uh, she doesn't know how to do that yet, and... Um, Unfortunately, it also means that uh, I'll chop, probably just leave them alone because stress can often cause them to eat their first clutches, their early clutches. So these are Scalara Angels. The blue one is called a Turkish Blue uh, from Istanbul. I got it from Aquatic Arts. They are beautiful fish. There's links in the description below uh, to them. And then the other one, Sergio, is also from Aquatic Arts, and he is a German smoky blue Scalara, and he's got kind of this awesome bronze to gold crown, depending on his mood. Sometimes it's just kind of silver, but then he's got blue all throughout his fins. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but and a silver uh, gunmetal gray to blue in the rest of his body. Now what she's doing is she is uh, warding off any little hydra or little daphnia or spores, things like that, that could be implanting themselves on there. And, um, you know, another way that you can tell uh, if an angelfish is male or female, too, is going to be the shape of their head, whether they have a notch on their, uh, on their head. And see, Sergio... His eye, you see that little strap that goes between his eye and his forehead? It's kind of like his eyes have a, a bridge of his nose almost. And that, that gives off the hint. But I'm surprised that at six months old, this little angel, she's laying so many uh, eggs. Very impressive. Uh, and now Sergio will definitely need to check back in. The other thing is we should take this angel out, the uh, the other male, and we should definitely put him back into the other tank as he is nothing but competition 
uh, which may actually end up hurting, harming, killing uh, babies, leading to stress. So we'll do that. Also, we have the cribs who have their babies down here. And if you saw the live video the other night, they ate their babies, but literally the other female came and laid more eggs. So we'll see what happens. This tank is full of life, whether it's the cribs, the reed tetras, which just randomly appear. I don't know how they spawn. I mean, they scatter their eggs. That's how they spawn. Uh, or whether it is the angel fish, which are very obvious about their spawning. Oh, look, she used the lines in the the vein of the leaf as a sort of guide to rows. Now, the reason they do that is so that if one starts to mold, uh, it will only affect the one before and after it, not, not grow circularly. So what she'll be doing for the next few hours, he may do it also, is getting those so they're not stacked right on top of each other. And as soon as they mold, they'll be awake for the next few days uh, spe specifically Sergio, there you can see his bump right on his head there that shows that he's a he's a big old boy, his eye there, that strap. Um, and that will keep all the mold off there. And also it will inoculate the surface with biofilm from the fish that should um, give them their uh, immune system partially through the permeable layer that is the egg. So it's kind of interesting. They get they need lots of oxygen into their uh into the egg and they also need um that care of when one molds up, which is pretty much inevitable that somebody comes and takes care of it. Now they like to put them all in one spot if they can help it. You see she's like right now just drop it. She just dropped about 6 in a row. Uh, so she still has eggs. I've been fattening them up with live food and blood worms. Um, but good to know that she's in good spawning condition. And hopefully he won't hurt her. We'll have to keep a close eye. But her belly's looking a lot less plump now that she's had those. There could be another hundred eggs inside. And uh, be a couple days before these hatch. And then there'll be wrigglers, which the parents will swim around and actually be able to literally pick up in their mouth and stick them to the glass or stick them to the log, put them wherever they want, and, uh, and uh, that's how they manage them. And then they'll go look for food or danger, with the male generally foregoing food in order to keep fanning with his fins the, the clutch as well as keeping an eye out for little vermins and things like that. Now, if they get scared, they'll eat their clutch and they'll end up, um, they'll end up using all that protein and all the vitamins that are in that because these little fish are going to have a slight egg sac, not, not a big one like a pleco would have, but they'll have a slight egg sac and that will give them nutrients. So she'll continue to lay here probably another hour or two. Uh, by the looks of her belly, you can see she's getting narrower when we look at her sideways, but she still does have quite a big belly right behind her pectoral fins. Uh, and so that's that, you guys. I just thought that I would share this awesome little moment with you and uh, show you how angelfish give birth and how they kind of take care of the eggs. Uh, and you don't need a cone or glass uh, walls or slate always to get things to work um, for spawning, you can just have plants uh, if you have a planted tank. A lot of people say you need to buy a terracotta cone, especially for like discus and other fish um, other than just angelfish. But really, um, you're, you're totally sound with some nice broadleaf plants and a slight bit of flow near them not you don't want enough that the the leaf is waving up and down or having turbulence too much but you can see she's waving them and then she'll space them out like i said and we can come check on that in the next few days uh, she'll space them out so that uh, nobody rots the other ones but this is a pretty special moment in the fish room and uh, 
I'm glad I could share it with you guys and that Sergio's legacy will live on even after a six month timeout, which seems to have made him a much kinder and gentler mate, at least thus far. Uh, I guess I'll know tomorrow if she's still alive, if that's the case. But, all right, guys, so that's what's going on. This is in the 40 gallon bow front. I will talk to you later. Remember to take care of your fish, your plants, your critters. And, of course, take care of the people around you. Take care of the people that you love and that love you. And, of course, take care of yourself. Because if you don't do that, you can't do the other things, guys. Think of the other things. And uh, I think if half of us did half of that half the time, we'd have a world that's twice as good. On that note, swim on, little fishies. Swim on.